It's Tuesday morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get dingy with it. Welcome to the Green Means Go Betting channel. If this is your first time seeing one of my videos, it's nice to have you. Thank you for stopping by on your busy and hectic schedule. If you don't mind dropping a like on this video, putting a few comments on my picks, uh, subscribing, any of those things help grow my channel, help get my channel out, really manipulates the algorithm, if you will, and pushes my video out more. That's what I need uh, in order to continue to grow this channel. A little bit selfish here that I'm asking for this, but it's what you got to do. So if you don't mind doing any of those three things or all, it will help me immensely. I want to do these videos every Tuesday. I'm going to start making more content for you guys in terms of... Uh, promos and uh, different spots that I like uh, for different things on sports books. So if you can help me, I'll try to help you. So we'll start here today with Dinger Tuesday. That's why we're all here. And I showed in that very first clip, all right, this spreadsheet that I've created, and I'll walk through that with you one by one in just a little bit. But before we do that, I do want to talk about this promotion. So if you are a veteran of this promotion, if you've played since 2021, if you know the ins, outs, ups, and downs of Dinger Tuesday, you can skip down here. All right, I'll have a little timestamp for where I actually start talking about the picks. But if you are new and you want to know what this is all about, uh, stick around for two or three minutes. I'm going to explain it. So Dinger Tuesday is a promotion run by FanDuel. Like I've said, they've run it. This is their third year in a row. And what it is at its core, uh, besides being the best promotion, most valuable promotion, uh, most fun, in my opinion, promotion, it is uh, set up to where you bet $25 on a player to hit a home run in a game on Tuesday. If they hit it or not, doesn't matter, but you still get $5 bonus bets or free bets returned to you for every home run that is hit in that game. So if you pick Aaron Judge to hit a home run and he doesn't hit a home run, but five other Yankees hit one, you will get $25 back in free bets, which is a fantastic return, which is awesome, which is why this promo is so good. Now, I should say was so good. Past two years, you could bet $25 and be able to take every single game across across the slate. 15 MLB games usually on Tuesday, take all 15. What FanDuel has done this year is they've realized that it was a little too generous, and they've cut it down for some accounts. So what I want you to do, if you do not mind, is if you can type a comment down here and say limited or unlimited or $50 max or no max, something to give me an idea of who's watching this video. Is it more people who have this limit and are only looking for certain spots? Or is it people who, you know, are kind of brand new to this and, and have, you know, the, the world at their fingertips? So if you don't mind putting that down there, that will help me. So I say that to say, I used to be able to play all the games. It was awesome. I can now only play what I believe will be enough to return $50 in free bets is kind of how I've targeted it. So for four weeks now, uh, I have played only three games because I'm, I'm thinking if I can average three home runs a game, I'm going to get my $50 back. Obviously, be just short with that, but you get the idea. So the first week, uh, I believe I got $50 returned and I hit two players out of three. The next week, I got my $50 returned and I hit one player. Week after that, can't remember the return. It was I know it was less than 50. I didn't hit any. And then last week I hit one and I had $35 return, a lot lower home run totals. So I'm up on this promotion, you know, not as much as I was you know, two years ago and last year, but I, I'm still able to, um, to profit. And I do think the pitching rules and the warmer weather is helping uh, the consumer in this promotion. So that's all good stuff to see. So that's what the promotion is all about. If you have questions about it, shoot me a comment. I'll be happy to answer them. Let's look at this chart. Okay, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. This is what I would call busy, confusing. There's a lot here, and I want to break it down for you after I take a sip of this um, Keurig. It is, uh, what, did, what, did I, what did I put in there today? Five o'clock? Mm, five o'clock brew? It's pretty average. But the vanilla bean coffee mate creamer, you know, all those soy oils, all that good stuff for your body. 
That's what you want there. Okay. What I plan to do every week is give you a full slate breakdown. And that's what this is right here. Now, I, wanna, I do want to walk through this so I can kind of clear up what all of this means before we get into the picks. Don't worry, the picks are hidden under here. You will see them soon enough. So at, at first we have the game. These are all the games that are going to be played tonight, pending weather or you know anything else uh, freakish that happens. Um, so we got the Mets, Detroit, et cetera, et cetera. Now these are listed in order of their first pitch. So this will be the first game tonight, second game, third game, all the way down to the last pitch, which will be in LA. Now, um, the, the, obviously there's, there's some wiggle room. Some of these may not be perfectly in order, but you, you get the idea. Next, I've listed the pitcher, uh, who is slated to start. We know in MLB this stuff can change, and we saw it last night with uh, Garcia for the Astros, right? He he pitched 0, 0.0 innings. I actually don't know what happened. He probably got hurt in warm-ups or something. So, again, take this kind of um, at 90% at accuracy. There may be some changes after I make the video, but just keep in mind that this is what it is. This is kind of what I'm basing my picks on. Third column here is IP innings pitched for the pitcher this year. Listen. Time out, okay? Big news flash. This is going to be very, very, very small sample sizes as we get going. And I understand that in sports betting, small sample sizes are your enemy, okay? You don't want to take a small sample size and try to draw a bigger conclusion. I get that, all right? But right now, I'm going to do that to some degree as it helps me pick out spots for this for this promotion, and, and I'm acknowledging that, okay? So, you know, don't come at me like, why are you, you know, he's only pitched 12 innings. I get it, okay? So as you can see, Garrett Cole has pitched the most innings on the slate tonight at 40, and he's facing, or he's opposite a guy uh, who has <laughs> pitched the least uh, five innings. So, oh, sorry, this was added actually this morning. Uh, uh, Miller here just got called up from the minors, and he's going to be starting tonight for the first time. Um, against the A's, so he is actually the lowest, but you get the idea, okay? So as the season progresses, as we get into June and July and August, we're going to have, you know, hundreds of innings pitched, probably 70, 80, 90, and that will help us be a little more accurate. The next column is just simply how many home runs they have given up this year and the start, all right? The most home runs given up will be Michael Kopech with eight. You got a lot of guys with still no home runs given up. You know, Garrett Cole, most pitches, least home runs. That's something I, I am uh, thinking about here. Um, the next column is home runs per inning pitched. This is just simply how many home runs divided by the innings pitched. And what I've done is I've color-coded these based on the MLB average. So the MLB average is 0.14 home runs per innings pitch. It's, and what I did was I took home runs per innings pitched for the last five years, you know, full seasons, and it comes out to about 1.3-ish Um uh, for for last year, you know, 1.4 for they've all kind of hovered around that, which tells me that it's pretty reliable data. If in the last five years they've all hit, you know, within 0.15 of this number, and so that's what actually less, not even 0.1, less than 0.1 percent uh, of that number. So what I've done is I've color coded them. So if they're if it's less than the MLB average, so if the pitcher is giving up, say here for Anthony Del Scafani at 0.13 right above my head, I've colored it red. Anything below that's red. So if they're below the league average, they're getting a red number, which means, you know, maybe watch out. Maybe we don't want to pick players who are facing that pitcher. If they are yellow, they are at that average up to about double that average, um, 0.2. Two five, I think, is where I cut it off. Uh, that's just gonna be—you're gonna get your league average home runs for those guys. And then if you get green, they're giving up um, at least double the league average in home runs. So that's what you can see here. Again, small sample size. All right, I understand that, and I don't want you to think that this is just—you know—this is your golden ticket. Um, so keep all that in mind. The column next to that is home runs per five innings. And what that is simply saying is if they pitch five innings, which most MLB pitchers, depending on, you know, the game and everything will, will target you know, a completed game is five innings pitched. How many home runs can we expect to see given up? Now there's all kinds of variables with this. It's not a perfect situation and, and it is based on a small sample size. Again, I get that, but 
it's something that helps me visualize where I might want to target. So, you know, this game, for example, if I have the limited $50 version, uh, I can only play a few games. This is one that I'm going to target because you got, a, uh, we'll get to this column in a second, but you got pitchers who are giving up some, some hard hit balls and you have um, this column. Ballpark Pals home run percentage. So I'm going to flip over here to Ballpark Pal real quick. This is a website that I think is absolutely fantastic. This guy has a model and he, and he produces this website and he puts it out for absolutely no fee at all. You can go here, you can look at game simulations, pitchers, matchups, players. Pro. This thing is just a deep reservoir of information. Now, what I like to do here is move my face out of the way so you can see first and foremost, but I like to look at this column right here. So what this does is it looks at park and weather. Okay, park and weather only. It's saying, how is the temperature? How is the wind? Where are they playing? Is it high elevation? Is it, you know, at sea level? Is it uh, indoors? Is how, how is right field? Is, is the wall really tall in right field, right? So all of these things, it, it, it measures and it grabs historical data from all those, compares, you know, a 50 degree night from 2004, what happened there, you know, and it puts it all into this. And so it gives you a percentage increase based on the average of that park to what it should be tonight. Awesome. Okay. Now I will say this is not, you know, again, this is not the end all be all of, of the situation. If you go back to last night, for example, and you look at Fenway Park, okay, minus 29%, you may see that and say, we can't take home runs, right? We, we, we have to avoid that game, you know, but the wind was going out. And I think there were four home runs hitting that game. So that would have been a great spot to play Dinger Tuesday, even though it's this. So it again, it's just a piece of the puzzle. It's something to keep in mind. And it's not, whoa, it's not something that is going to necessarily be the you know cha thing that changes my mind. So that is what this column is saying. Again, I've color coded it. Uh, anything in the negative 10 to 10 range is going to be yellow. That's just kind of a, a neutral spot. Anything below negative 10% is going to be in red. Anything higher than 10 is going to be in green. I will also say this changes. This info changes um, you know, hourly. So, you know, I put all these in yesterday and this morning I had to go update them. So you're going to see these fluctuate a little bit, which again is why, you know, don't get too, uh, worked up about that number. It's just something to keep in mind. I do want to kind of move this column in just a tad. There we go. Okay. And finally, the last column of information here is the green means go grade. That is my channel. Again, if you can like, if you can subscribe, if you can put a comment, that helps me a ton. Green means go is going to try to advance in this uh, crazy sports betting world uh, as best we can. And your support is appreciated. This is my grade for the game. This is how I feel in terms of how many home runs are going to be hit. And I think I will probably play anything C and above. Um, D makes me a little nervous and there's no F's today, nothing I hate. Um, but that is going to kind of be my summative score for all of these other columns on here. What I think is, is, you know, things to target without further ado, let's get into some picks, which is why you're all here. Hopefully. So we'll start over here. We'll start with the first game of the night. And we will reveal both of these. So tonight, I'm going to go with two Mets. Uh, because, actually, pause. Before I say any of this, the, it, it is 8 o'clock. So lineups are not out. This is a huge piece that I should have, you know, I'm glad I'm saying it now. Lineups on, some sports books have different rules. If you take a home run hitter on DraftKings and they're not in the lineup, the pick is void. You get your money back. They don't do anything. If you take it on FanDuel, so let's say uh, Brandon Nimmo does not start tonight. He's not in the starting nine. If, if in the fifth inning he comes in and pinch hits for somebody, that bet is live on FanDuel. And so Brandon Nimmo has missed five innings of action where he could have had home runs. That is something I don't love, and it is a bit manipulative, I find, from FanDuel to do. So my number one thing about taking these picks is to wait for lineups. 
I would say 85% of the time the guys I put on here are going to start. So if you look at all these, you know, maybe two of these guys don't end up starting. But on that instance, I would rather you take a little bit of loss in value. So, you know, Brandon Nimmo is plus 800 at the time of filming by the game. You know, first pitch, he may be plus 670 or something, right? I would rather you be able to get him at plus 670 and know he's starting than get him at plus 800 and him only have one at bat for a pinch hit. So if if you are being extra cautious, I would watch this video and I would wait until lineups come out. A great resource is just RotoWire's uh, MLB daily lineups. That's where I'm looking at, at, at my you know picks. So Nimmo is slated to lead off and Lindor is slated to bat third. So you know those things are things I'm taking in consideration. So these are my picks tonight. I'm going with two Mets uh, against Lorenzen, who has shown he can hit home runs. The park's not amazing tonight, but the wind is blowing out, um, which is favorable for hitters. Uh, I believe it's blowing out. If we flip over here to Detroit, uh, yeah, out to the left. So, you know, it, it's 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 not the best spot. It's why it's got a grade of a D, but if I'm going with that game, these are the two guys I'm going with. All right, moving down to Atlanta and Miami. This game I like. This is a game that I will likely play tonight um, as it is the third highest rating on my card. It's indoors. Now, these pitchers are decent, uh, but they have been giving up a few home runs. One thing I will add is Atlanta's kind of played a funky little, you know, came off a funky little series with the Mets where games were getting delayed after delay. They had a doubleheader yesterday. So I take that into consideration where they may come in a little sluggish, uh, no pun intended, opposite of sluggish. They will be sluggish in the mind, but not at the bats. Um, and so, you know, Matt Olson may not be the best a pick given that but i actually don't know if he started yesterday It'd be interesting to 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 check that information but just keep that kind of stuff in mind i'll try to point that stuff out as we make these so matt olson batting for atlanta and jazz chisolmu should lead off uh for the marlins uh two guys that i think have a good chance of hitting home runs this evening moving on to this game and this game is odd and i don't know why and let me flip over to FanDuel. Because when I made this, when I put this on, yeah, the game's not listed, which doesn't make sense to me uh, because these guys are starting. It's indoors, so it's not like they're kind of waiting for a weather report. I don't know. But here is who I'm targeting, Key Brian Hayes and Andrew McCutcheon, both Pirates guys. Um, and maybe that's not the right play. Uh, but I do think Contreras has looked great. If I had to go a Tampa Bay guy tonight, uh, it would be it would be Wander Franco. You know, he he doesn't. Uh, gosh, maybe it should be Wander Franco. <laughs> um, oh man, have I changed my mind? Okay. Hmm. Um, no, I'm not going to change my mind. I'm going to keep. That's one thing about Dinger Tuesdays. You can't change your mind. you got to go with your gut. Keep Brian Hayes and Andrew McCutcheon. I'm going to stick with it. And if Wander Franco homers, I'm just going to bury my head like this next week when I come back on here. So I don't have odds. You know, how about this? Here's what we'll say. If if Key Brian Hayes opens up at in the 300s uh, and McCutcheon, you know, he's probably going to be four or five. And, and you see Franco down there at six, seven. Take Franco, all right. We'll 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 go value here uh, over anything else. Um, which, again, I don't I don't like that the odds aren't listed, but you know because this could be a game I target as well. It's not horrible and it's indoors, so uh, just keep in mind that I like Hayes McCutcheon and possibly Wander Franco. Moving on, fourth game. Golly, the Yankees have just looked bad. No other way to say it. They, I don't. I I mean, they just. They just keep dropping games, and maybe it's because they're injured. I don't know, uh, but I, I don't, I, whatever. I'm going with two Yankees tonight just because Garrett Cole, he used to be a pretty big, hard-hit ball pitcher, and he'd give up home runs, but he's gotten it together this year. And he's facing a guy that's only had f – he's not facing him, but the Yankees are facing a guy with only five innings pitched, which tells me the target point is the Yankees here. Again, not horrible, um, and, um, 
Rizzo had one last night that, you know, just reached deep warning track, didn't get out. So I'm going to go with Rizzo at 400. Frankie Cordero, I, I, I think, has, has hit some big home runs this year, and I think he will start. But for some reason, FanDuel doesn't have his odds listed right now. I'm going to guess he comes out 650-ish. So uh, 650 is kind of your target number to play if he can if you can get him about there. Uh, moving on to Cubs Washington, bad pitchers this game, um, and you know a ballpark that I think will end up being okay, cloudy 53. Um, you know, so also something to target if, if you don't have the limited version if you can play all of these games sorry if you can play all of these games FanDuel doesn't have you on the cap you know if it was me I'd be playing every game um, and not giving too much you know thought about this just because I think the value exceeds this kind of uh, analysis if you are temporary if you if you are somewhat conservative maybe play the C's B's and A's and uh, but if, if you have my fifty dollar version, you have to pick and choose. This is a game that I would definitely be playing if I had the unlimited version, but because I don't, it's kind of a toss up. So two pitchers who have given up quite a few home runs, um, and my A team pick is Cody Bellinger at plus three fifty. I don't love the number, but I do love that he has two home runs in eight at bats versus Trevor Williams. That is that is. That's unreal uh, in terms of math. Again, small sample size, but he, he, I was sold when I saw that. CJ Abrams has two to three home runs this year, which I get is not, you know, it's not off the charts, but at 11 to 1, I mean, if you hit this and you have the limited version, you're good for a few weeks. You can go over a couple times and you could still be up. I just think this, this is more of a value play than anything. He, he has hit some, and he's hit one in the last week. Uh, he's at home against a guy who's giving up home runs. I just, for FanDuel to be putting an 1100 on Dinger Tuesday against with a guy who's done it recently, the value's too good to be true. Now, I also like Kiebert Ruiz uh, in this game. Uh, if if C.J. Abrams isn't speaking your language, um, and over for the Cubs, if if you if you don't like Bellinger's number. I didn't mind Hosmer uh, at 680, I believed he was. So those are some other things to keep in mind should you not care for these two guys. Moving on to Boston, which has one of the worst um, park conditions tonight. And I would definitely be off of that game um, if I was conservative here. Um, So... I do, I, I do like Dalton Varsho tonight at plus six hundred and Rob Reffensnyder at plus nine hundred. Doesn't I think he only has one home run this year, but at nine hundred, kind of a C.J. Abrams feel. Where you know, last year, towards the end of the year, he was hitting quite a few home runs, and to get him at this price, I think is a good value. But again, keep in mind the the park, Boston. You got the Green Monster out there. It's not the best, uh, but uh, Kikuchi ha- is giving up. You know, he's given up six home runs. So just take that information how you will. I'm staying off this game. My best game of the night. My only A rating on the card. I know we can't quite see this over there, but you see there's no dark green. My only A rating on the card is uh, Chicago hosting the Twins. And I'm going with two Twins because we know they're going to get nine innings because they're the away team. Uh, two guys that I believe are slated to be close to the top of the order, Kepler and uh, Larch, middle of the order. Kepler at 340 and Trevor Larch at 630. I think, again, this is too I mean, look at this guy's last name. It almost looks like Launch. How are you going to not pick a guy whose last name is Launch on Dinger Tuesday? Seriously. So these are two guys I'm targeting tonight, both twins against Michael Kopech, who's given up the most home runs on the slate. Uh, I think... I think these are probably my best bets of the night to take these two guys. Kansas City does indeed have the absolute worst park conditions tonight. Pitchers are decent. I'm going to go with MJ Melendez for the Royals at plus 560. Ryan Mountcastle at 470. Um, again, if I'm playing all the slate, I'm taking them. If I if 
if I'm not, um, you know, I'm going to avoid this game, but these are the picks that I would make if these were the only option. This was the only game of the night. Okay. So it, because of the pitching, I'm still going to give it a C, even though it has pretty poor. And I realize this kind of counter, it's kind of counterintuitive here that I, you know, I'm not consistent in this same way, but Boston, I think poses a, a, a different element for hitters. And so I'm going to, I'll just keep that there, even though it may be counterintuitive. Okay, moving over here. Slide my screen. Slide my head. I don't know. Should I keep these? I'm not going to keep them. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to those so you guys can get one full final view of that when I'm when I'm finished. Okay, perfect. Angels are heading to St. Louis. Uh, two guys have pitched quite a few games this year. And we have Hunter Renfro, man. He loves Tuesdays. That's sort of the little inside joke I have with some of my buddies. We talk about Dinger Tuesday. Hunter Renfro loves Tuesdays. They're, I mean, last year, dude probably hit five home runs on Tuesdays across the season. So it's kind of tradition at this point to go with him. I couldn't figure out a second guy. I, I didn't quite know who I wanted to target. I went and looked, and I saw that Anthony Rendon has four home runs off of Steven Matz. Now, he does have 30 at-bats, but at 6-1 to one for a guy who's clearly been able to hit off of Matz, it, it, it caught my eye, and it gave me confidence that that's the play of the night uh, for this game. Not at all for the play of the night, but for this game. Um, so, again, not a game I'm necessarily targeting, but if you have the full version, Rendon and Rinfo would be my plays. Moving to Texas, and, and this is interesting because Zach Gallen has been on a tear, uh, been pitching fantastic. Last last uh, outing, I believe he had 13 strikeouts, set an, uh, a Diamondbacks uh, club record. So I do think that, that FanDuel is kind of helping us out here. And it's giving us a price on some of these Texas guys that that I would find to be overly generous for for playing at home for rolling lately. I mean, they've rolled the Yankees like fifteen to two the other night. Balls flying off their bats. Now I realize I picked Pavin Smith, who's an who is an Arizona Diamondback, uh, which is kind of counterintuitive to everything I've been saying. But uh, at five twenty, I do like Pavin Smith tonight. But my B team look, and I just did this because it was my first pick, and I didn't have the heart to change it because I knew I'd kick myself if I did. But Robbie Grossman at plus 830, that's too generous. I'm sorry. that That is too – let's look and see, you know, what Robbie Grossman has done this season. Three home runs, um, you know, I, I want to say most of those, if not all, are at home. Um, so – I just, I, again, it is when I say all this, it, it doesn't mean it's gonna hit. It does, I'm not saying Robbie Grossman is a lock to hit a home run, but if you tell me that he's gonna, you know, get eight games against Zach Gallen, and and he just has to hit one home run in eight games for us to profit, I'm gonna take that bet every time. And so that's why I think the, you know, plus eight thirty is a good spot. I. And, and what kills me is there's other guys I like in this game. I like Lowe. I like uh, Jonah Heim, uh, you know, Josh Jung, Travis Janikowski. God. And I put Pavin Smith on there. We're keeping it, but just know that if if your push came to shove and, and I had to pick some of these other dudes, I might switch up. Um, I might kick myself later. I know I am. Okay. In Houston, in a dome stadium with good pitching, uh, I will go to Kyle Tucker. I will always go Tucker on Tuesdays. It's just something you're going to have to get used to. If Tucker is going to start, it is likely that I'm going to take him. He was a guy that cast cash for me over and over and over and over and over on Tuesdays the last two years, probably my most profitable player. And so when I see Kyle Tucker up there, you know, it, it's just sort of a, a commitment thing. It, you know, it's a, it's, I'm a man of, uh, I'm, 
I'm a man of commitment. I, I stick with who sticks with me. So Kyle Tucker it is. And Lamonte Wade Jr. was looking great uh, in his games in Mexico City this past weekend. I get that that's a little bit skewed. Um, and again, something to keep in mind, San, San Francisco looked okay last night for having just you know, had to do all that traveling. But um, the other guy I would have picked would be Alvarez, but I can't. My number one rule for Dinger Tuesday, besides trusting my gut, is to not dip below um, plus 300. I can't do it. I, I just cannot. If a guy is 285, I, I won't do it. Um, and Alvarez is 285, so we're staying off of it. So Lamonte Wade leading off, hopefully, for the Giants is my B-team pick. This is the game of the night, in my opinion. Uh, this is the game that I'm targeting. Even though the pitching's been good, I do think that we're going to see five home runs in this game, and that's all we need to see to, to to get our value out of this. So Charlie Blackman at 600 is, again, I think too generous. And Jesse Winker at 420 is a good spot for Milwaukee. I try to break it down by team here. Uh, there's some other guys I don't mind. Yelich uh, would be pretty decent. Telez would be decent, but I'm going to stick with these two guys. This is next game is probably the most frustrating game um, on the slate because Logan Gilbert was going to start, and then they took him off for this fella, Bryce Miller. Uh, it's not going to tell me his first name. Uh, this will. Uh, Bryce Miller, yeah. So Bryce Miller is a minor leaguer. He's getting his first MLB start. And by golly, he's picked a great team to go against. I've wanted nothing more than to pick two athletics that I felt great about facing this, we'll call him a rookie. And I couldn't. You know, Ryan Noda is who I decided on, but I couldn't find a second guy I liked. So Ryan Noda is my A-team pick facing a Bryce Miller who we don't know what he's going to do in a park that doesn't look great. Uh, but for my B team, I had to go Colton Wong. Okay, Wong Dong on Tuesday is another thing, kind of like Kyle Tucker. Colton Wong made me solid money, solid returns last year. And when I see, and you know, I was betting him at 750, 680. When I see 10 to 1 you know, plus 1,000, it's hard for me uh, deep down to ignore that. So, you know, while Wong has not had a, a season you know, that's anything to show for, (laughs) right? I mean, this isn't great. I don't want to sit here and say I'm proud of that zero home runs, but it's got to happen sometime, right? He's due. The due factor's high. So that is my pick there. This, this to me is wild. Um, And again, maybe it's Park, maybe it's the name, you know, Michael Waka that's doing it, but TJ Friedel and Jake Fraley at 800 each, this game, I don't love in terms of home run output, but I may bet this game only because these two guys who have hit a decent amount of home runs this year for how many you know starts they get. Jake Fraley's, he does only have two, fair enough. TJ Friedel's got two, fair enough. But, um, you know, I just think that that number is, is too high for these guys. Um and maybe again, it's park and pitcher that's kind of making that number go up. But th- those would be my targets for this evening. Finally, we have the last game of the night. We have the Trey Turner revenge game. Trey goes back to LA for the first time, I believe, against Julio Urias, who's given up seven home runs this year at 450. You know, the homecoming. I like it, and I will. Uh, I will go ahead and, and play that if I had the unlimited version. Other pick of the night is JT Romuto. I'm taking two Phillies against Urias. Strom is just kind of an abnormal pitcher. If you get the chance to watch him tonight, he's just kind of got a weird situation going on, uh, the hair and everything. And I just Dodgers Dodgers do hit well, but I I don't like him against Strom tonight. So I'm going with two Phillies there. So in review. If I'm going to go through this and I'm going to kind of give you um, sort of one last parting wish is if you have the unlimited version and you're feeling great, play them all. Play them all. Don't overthink all these colors and, and things that I've given you. If you have the unlimited version and you are a little bit, you know, this is your first time, you want to dip your toes in the water, play yellow and above on the green means go great. So skip skip the the skip the Mets game, you know, skip this, skip, skip about half the games and play half. 
If you have the limited version, the $50 version, I'm definitely going to target this. Uh, I'm definitely going to target this game, Kepler and Larch. I'm definitely going to target this game, Blackman and Winker. You know, and I may mix it up and just try to get some value. Uh, I may go here, Bellinger and Abrams. Uh, obviously, this makes sense, Olsen and Chazam. I may go here with Texas because it's a dome stadium. Even though gallons look good, we do have a chance of more home runs when it's in a dome. Um, you know, same thing with this. So I I may reach, if you are a, a $50 limited, I would say it's fine to reach to a C tier uh, and, and kind of look at that situation. So if you guys... Again, like the content. If you can drop me who you're going with, another pick that you think I maybe looked over, you can do that. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller for you guys. Um, so you can, you know, if you want to screenshot this, right, and you can kind of analyze it. This is for you, right? I'm doing this for you guys. I want you guys to succeed. I want you guys to win some money. And so that's why we're doing this. So if you screenshot this on your phone, you can zoom in, you can kind of play with this, uh, use the data how you feel. So thank you. As always, share this if you can. Uh, talk about this. This is a great money-making opportunity. I firmly believe that if you play this starting now to the end of the season, you 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 should make money. And I'm not just saying that as a tout, as somebody who wants you to know, okay, this is, I am a very conservative better. And this is something that I believe has shown me and for three straight years that it can be profitable. So best of luck to you. Um, and we will see you on May 9th.